After spending a few restful days on the farmstead with her friends, it was time for Nisha to say goodbye to Sophie before heading back to Windhelm. She also spent a few moments going over some last minute plans with Adelaisa to ensure the farmstead was running smoothly and efficiently. Glad Orthus was able to find someone competent to help out. Very good, ma'am. I'll take my leave then. I can't believe we let them take the pale. Losing the Port of Dawn Star is lessened only by the threat of Imperial forces being so close to Windhelm. My Jarl, is there anything else you need? I'd like to offer you a place in my court, as a thane. It's mainly an honorary title, but there are a few perks. Now, by law and tradition, I can only grant this title to one who is known throughout Eastmarch and who owns property in Wenhelm. If you do good works for the people and purchase a home from my steward, I'll name you my thane. It will be an honor. The honor will be mine. Being made a thane for Jarl Ulfric was an unexpected turn of events. It would bolster her standing in Windhelm and also within the ranks of the Stormcloaks. This was something that she would need to give careful consideration to. What's our next move against the Empire? Get over to our camp in the Reach. They need every able body they can muster. What exactly will I be doing out there? You'll be doing whatever Garmar tells you to do, and causing as much mayhem as possible for the Empire and any Jarl who supports them. Understood. Talos guide you. Need something? The Reach was on the other side of Skyrim and would take some time to get to, so she gathered her companions and left immediately to meet up with Galmar. It was a short while after leaving Rorikstead that Nisha and her companions were travelling past what looked like a disused fort. It wasn't until the group were nearly outside the entrance that they were attacked. Come on, show me what you've got. Forsworn were pouring out of the fort, clearly intent on robbing and murdering the four friends. However, the Forsworn had bitten off more than they had realized this time. Don't see that every day. That's your best, huh? The Forsworn, who had rushed out of the front, were quickly dispatched, but there were still a fair few number on the battlements that could only be reached with ranged attack. Once all the attackers had been taken care of, Nisha wanted to check inside the fort for any more Forsworn who might be lurking in there. She was not happy to be set upon like this and wanted to make sure it didn't happen to anyone else. Nisha wanted to keep the element of surprise for as long as possible, so as pleased she was able to take out the first Forsworn without alerting anyone else. Hello? Who's there? I'll try and make this Guide me! Ah! Death comes on. 
Silence will serve us well in this place. Let us take our foes by surprise. Despite the noise of the fight with the second Forsworn, she knew Janessa's words to be true, so the group moved off as quietly as they could. The quiet approach didn't last long. These Forsworn were very much alert and ready to defend themselves. Moving further into the fort, the friends had to contend with undead as well as Forsworn, a battle that nearly saw the end of Nisha and her companions. It appeared that, that was the last of the Forsworn in this part of the keep. And now a dragon. Could her day get any better? Unable to follow the dragon up the mountain, Nisha headed inside the other side of the fort to check for more Forsworn. What horror is this? It appeared to be a Forsworn shaman performing some sort of bloody ritual to a ruined and twisted shrine to Dubella. Not a shaman, but a briar heart. A high-ranking male forsworn whose heart had been replaced by a briar heart in a secret and bloody ritual that was known only to the forsworn. It's said that the forsworn make dark packs with the hog ravens, and that is why they can use magic. The shrine to Dubella had definitely been desecrated, but despite the gruesome trinkets, it still offered Dubella's blessing. The 
chest in the Briar Hearts living quarters had some amazing contents. Not least was a superb set of dragon plate armour, which she would give to Froa. As soon as her hand touched the crystal, a strange voice filled her head. It appeared she had caught the attention of one of the Daedra. Listen, hear me and obey. A foul darkness has seeped into my temple. A darkness that you will destroy. Return my beacon to Mount Kilcreath. And I will make you the instrument of my cleansing life. This was not something she wanted, but she also didn't want to anger it. Pocketing the crystal, she would look into this at a later time. Take the fight Having given Froa the dragon plate armor, up, it was time to continue up. their journey to find Galmar in the Reach. Arriving at the camp, Nisha found out that Galmar wasn't there yet, so making herself comfortable, she waited for him to arrive. Yes. The next day, when Galmar arrived, it was wet and chilly, but this didn't stop her from reporting in to get her orders. Before we wage war upon our foes, we must wage a war against our lesser selves. Cleave to your higher voice, and with it, shatter your foes. Reporting in. Get over to Markarth. Rumor has it, the Yarrow steward, Rayrek, is a faithful Talos worshipper, if not a true son of Skyrim. He still supports the Empire, after all. But, if confronted with proof of his belief, you might be able to persuade him to aid our cause. Indirectly, of course. Wouldn't want to sully his reputation, would we? You'll need to be careful with this one. The Yarrow's men won't look kindly on you rummaging through the steward's quarters. I'll get proof. And Ray Rex cooperation. I can always count on you, can't I? So Markarth it was then. Hopefully this time she wouldn't be greeted by a murder in the street. Once Nisha got to Understone Keep in Markarth, she stopped to chat with a fellow Redguard who turned out to be a house carl for Jarl Igmund. While talking, Nisha managed to find out where the steward's quarters were located. Asking her friends to wait for her, Nisha broke into the steward's quarters to get the evidence that she needed. Now she had the evidence to blackmail the steward, it was time to speak with him. I advise Ickman the same way I advised his father. Caution, caution, caution. Recognize this? I suppose you're here to extort something from me. Is that it? Well, what is it you want? If you believe in Talos, why don't you join our cause? So... You're one of Ulfric's spies. I can't deny the man is right about a few things, but I've seen firsthand what Ulfric is capable of, given the chance. Suffice it to say, he is no friend to Markarth, and no friend of mine. My first and only loyalties are to my nephew, and to this city. Perhaps we could come to some kind of agreement. Hmm. <sighs> what if I told you about a large shipment of silver and weapons? Go on, I'm listening. Oh no, I won't tell you anything more until we have an agreement. All right, it's a deal. Where can I find this shipment? 
They're taking it by wagon to solitude. If you hurry, you'll catch them before they get far. It'll be a fairly slow-moving caravan. The shipment's quite heavy and guarded by many men. Now, let's pretend we never had this discussion. I have letters to read. Gathering her friends, it was time to leave Markarth and head back to Galmar. Nisha just hoped that Rayrek didn't start shouting for the guards. I long to be out there with my brothers, waging war against the Empire. Before we wage war upon our foes, we must wage a war against our lesser selves. Cleave to your higher voice, and with it, shatter your foes. Rayrek says there's a shipment of coin travelling to Solitude. Good job. I knew you'd come back with something for me. It just so happens I've got some scouts along the road. Meet up with them, and together see if you can't overpower the caravan. After studying the map to find the location of Galmar's troops, Nisha headed out to meet them. Hey there. I was wondering if I'd run into you out here. The Reach is a beautiful but dangerous place, eh? One false step and you'll fall to your death. That is, if those Forsworn don't get you first. Have you seen those Briarheart men? That's some evil magic right there. What brings you? You have the look of purpose in your eyes. There's an enemy wagon loaded with coin and weapons. We need to capture it. Really? It just so happens we've been tracking a wagon. For about a day now. So that's what's in there. Coins and weapons. How do you know that? I blackmailed Rayrek for the information. That was crafty. I'm sure having a steward in the pocket will come in handy. Lucky for us that the wagon recently had a little accident. They're stranded now, just up the road. We're outnumbered. But I have a plan. You got here just in time. What's the plan? First, we're going to take out their sentry. Then we'll situate ourselves overlooking the camp. Next, you'll infiltrate their position and get their attention, while we hit them with a barrage of arrows. With a bit of luck, we'll catch them completely off guard and even the odds a little. Ready? Let's go. Good. There's a sentry patrol in the hill. So go in quiet and drop him with a combined arrow barrage. Keep low, fire on my word. Rayloff's sneaking left a lot to be desired, but they were still a short way from the Imperials, so hopefully they'd be alright. Infiltrate their camp. We'll cover you from the ridge. Good luck. Now the signal had been given, it was time to take out the caravan guards. Thora's new armour held up nicely in the short skirmish. Nisha was pleased to see her friend putting it to good use. Now to find Rayloff. We make quite a team, eh? I'll stay here and guard the ship. You get back to camp with news. Have them send some men with a new wagon. This one isn't going anywhere. 
Nisha decided to report the good news back to Galmar and get her next assignment. Used to sit by the campfire and tell stories, play cards and prepare battle scars. Those were good times. Well done. I'll send men with a wagon to collect our prize. We'll put the weapons to use here, and I'll send the coin back to Vindelm. Reporting in. You're going to Fort Sungard. Meet the brothers preparing for the attack. Then join them in wiping out the Imperials. Once you prevail, we will garrison the fort. What do you say? Can you do this? The fort is as good as ours. Good. You've got real fire in you. I like that. Talos, guide you. Fort Sungard was south of Rorikstead, so not too far for the companions to travel. Now that she'd found her fellow Stormcloaks, it was time to take the fight to the Imperials. The fighting was fierce, with many casualties on both sides, but eventually the Stormcloaks managed to rout the Imperials. Is that it? That your best? Once they had been routed, the remaining Imperials made easy pickings for the attackers, but it was nearly nightfall before the last of the Imperials had either fled or been dispatched. Now all Nisha had to do was report back to Galmar. job. Ulfric was right about you. I'm glad to have you with us. Now that she had spoken to Galmar, he wanted her to give Ulfric an update. So Nisha returned to Windhelm with the good news. Could trust with all this planning nonsense, I would be out there breaking heads with the rest of you. The Empire thinks it holds Valkyrie from us, but the souls of Skyrim's bravest are buried there and will fill our hearts and strengthen our blades. What's our next move against the Empire? I suspect you'll be of greater use to us with greater freedom. 
so you're free to engage the Imperials as you see fit. But I also want you to find our hidden camp in Fort Greene. Galmar will have special tasks for you, and will need you when we liberate the capital. Understood. Go with the gods. Having spoken with Ulfric, Nisha knew that she would need to take her companions back to Falkreath to carry on the war. But for now, a night in the local tavern with some mead and stories around the hearth.